Hello and welcome, I'm Arumba. Thank you for joining me. Let's play some more Darkest Dungeon. We've got Fredegar the Crusader, we've got Stan the Highwayman, Necrophos the Seeker, Plague Doctor, and Susan. We've we had to bring Susan along, I mean, come on. Alright, so we got Radiant Lighting, right? We're at 100 on the Torch Meter, which increases our scouting, and it's more likely to surprise the monsters, which gives us a bonus chance to attack them. Found a free unburned torch, pretty cool. Every single tile that we walk through, notice how there's like four in between, is going to lower the, the lighting. So as we move forward, we can see that going down. Uh, there is a sarcophagus or an Iron Maiden. A rusty Iron Maiden stands against the well clasped shut. Uh, we can drag an item here to use it on this object. I think we're going to just, let's just chance it. We'll have uh, Fredegar the Crusader open it. Stashed loot. We found two busts and four crests. Pretty good. Pretty good haul. Continuing to march forward, notice Radiant Lighting is now down to 76. If it drops below 75, then it's going to go away. It'll change to a different light level. He just picked up 15 stress. If we get to 200 stress, mm, basically bad things. Bad things will happen. Um, in this case, I think that we're probably in the best position to do a, uh, a, grape a grape shot blast. Target all three characters. Notice how it says accuracy base, 75. Damage modifier, 50%. So if we look at Stan... Stan has a damage range by default of 5 to 11. Take 5 to 11, multiply it by the skill you're using to get the actual value. So since I have this skill selected and I hover over this, right down here you can see it's going to do actually 2 to 5 instead of his 5 to 11. So it looks to me like there's like a rounding down effect. Instead of doing like 2.5, it seems to just round down to the nearest floored value. So if we could get our base damage up to 6, that would pretty significantly increase the effect of Grape Shot Blast, but anyway. Let's just shoot him all in the face. That's what's important. We dodged a bump in the night. We're going to go ahead and use Zealous Accusation. We're going to reduce our damage by 40%, target the front two characters. Double dodge. Not so good. Now, Susan is going to be able to do a few skills. She's got Dazzling Light, which can stun a hero. She can do Divine Grace on uh, anybody. She can heal for three to five. That's a pretty good spell. It's single target. And Hand of Light, she needs to be in the front. Judgment. This is a damaged ma. Okay, so she can attack and heal herself. Well, I think I'm going to do Dazzling Light. This is going to give us some torch value, which will be nice. Reduces our necessi the necess I can't say that word. The necessity to use torches, and it can stun. That seems fine. Uh, we'll go ahead and use that against mm, anybody really. It'll just do two to four damage. Let's go for this guy because there's a chance we could actually kill him. Confidence surges as the enemy crumbles. Pretty good. So she lost four stress because she got a kill. Next up is Necrophos. He's got Noxious Blast. It's a ranged attack, accuracy of 80, reduces his base damage by 33%, and it will target the hero. So it does actual strike damage, and then he can also inflict Blight. Two points around for three rounds. Blight is like a rend effect. It's like a bleed, except it's poison. It's not. It's not blood. So on like an undead unit, we could affect him with Blight. Um, notice that says Bleed Resist 100%. It's because he's he's undead. He has no blood. But Blight Resistance 25. Uh, we could do an Incision. That doesn't make sense against these targets because they're undead. We could do Battlefield Medicine to cure Blights or Bleeds. Or Emboldening Vapors. Target gains 15% damage. Now one thing I would love is if in the game they could make it so that you can see which, char which, which characters have yet to act. Because I'm pretty sure we're still in round one. And I think he's the last to act. So, hmm. Let's go ahead and do... I don't really like any of these skills, actually. Hmm. <laughs> well, this one has the best chance to do the most damage. We can do 4 to 7 damage. Uh, I think we'll do 4 to 7 damage. Yeah, just kill that guy. This advantage. Give them no quarter. We, hit, we hit him with a skill that's supposed to make him bleed, but he can't bleed. So, whatever. Now, we could use her to try to kill this guy. I think we'll actually just go ahead and do Divine Grace. Use our healer for what she's good for. And you're going to do Open Vein. As the wow. Falls, a faint hope blossoms. That impressed the crap out of them. Everyone lost stress because they're like, holy crap, you crit him so hard. You smacked him for like 19 damage. That's a lot of, that's a lot of life. Okay, so we're in this room. There's nothing in here. Let's just go back to the initial room. And uh, once you've explored a room, 
the, uh, the, the lighting won't go down as much. When you go into a dark room, it takes more of your torch. If you go into a lit room, it only takes a tiny bit. I believe it's one if it's a room you've already been in. Notice how we're in the, the middle tile here. I'm thinking if we move to this one, it should go down by one. Down to 72. Yep. And then when we move into this one, I think it goes down by two per room. So now that we're down to dim light, we have increased stress. You'll notice stress is affecting our characters as we walk around. Scouting is reduced. Monster, we're less likely to surprise our monsters. We can go in here and use a torch. We are back up to radiant lighting. All right, so if we go into this, uh, we'll go here. Let's check this, 91. I think by the time we get there, it'll go down to 89. Oh, it went down by six, in fact. Hunger, the exertions of adventuring have produced a growing hunger amongst the party. We'll then eat, go ahead, let them have cake. We got hit by a trap. It's unfortunate. Six Ooh, damage. Machinations spring to life. A little bit of stress from that. With a singular purpose. We'll go ahead and use another torch. We're gonna keep our lighting really high because I want to surprise monsters and I'd really like to have um, scouting happen if possible. However, if you let the darkness come, there are some heroes who benefit from darkness. They have faster speed. They can do more criticals, that kind of stuff. And also, so you apparently you get better loot in the dark. I don't really know why, but you do. It's dashed heirlooms. A couple busts. Sweet, sweet, we can upgrade the castle. What do we got here? 100, 100 gold. It's always nice. Seems good. Alright, so we have an encounter. We've surprised them because it was so bright. We've blinded them with the lightning. With the light. We're going to do a grape shot blast because we can do pretty good damage to all three of them. Overall, I... I Count that as a win. Eight damage and a, in a free attack round is pretty sweet. I think we'll go ahead and use her turn to heal him up. Next up, I'd like to go for a kill if possible on position one or position two brigand. We'll do the uh, the incision because it's the highest overall direct damage right now. We did apply a bleed effect. I don't think it's going to matter because we're going to kill him with zealous accusation. No, he double dodged. Okay, well... Grape Shot Blast again. Alright, he's down. Nice dodge. No! Nice! Holy crap! How did that even happen? How can that happen? Now, I think some people would be under the... Okay, like, you could say, well, he's already got three rounds of bleed damage. And he's only got three health left, so he's effectively dead. True, but he does full damage, even if he's at three health. So we're gonna just kill him. We're gonna just make sure he's dead. I want to make sure we don't take any damage and we don't get crit because every time they attack there's a chance they can crit and whenever you get critical striked then everyone gains they gain stress so i find that like for keeping your party happy focusing down targets is really quite good and we could do judgment get some damage in um or let's see if we do if we do dazzling light we'll do two to four damage if we do judgment we'll do three to seven we have a much higher chance to crit when we crit, we lower stress. I think we go for the crit and the higher base damage. Unfortunately, he dodged. Zealous Accusation. I love that skill. It's good stuff. Stand the man. This expedition at least promises success. It's an alchemy table, a partially intact set of experimental equipment. Why don't we perform some experiments with, uh, let's see, who, who do you think would be good with alchemy? One would assume that the Plague Doctor is an alchemist, right? So we'll go ahead and select the Plague Doctor. You can do that press by pressing Q or E to change who you have selected if you want to use the keyboard, or you can click on him. Um, we'll go ahead and have him open it. New metals are synthesized. So we got some onyx and jade. So we just gained 750 gold from that. Pretty good call. I, I've actually not done that before. I don't know if that was the right call, but it worked. Okay, we got dim light. I should have used the torch before. We moved into the next room so we could actually have a better chance of surprising them, but uh, we're going to go ahead and... Who needs heals? No one needs heals. Why don't we do... The 3 to 7. Let's do more direct damage. Now what I'm looking for here, this guy's a human. This guy's undead. This skill does no bonus damage to undead or anything. But what I'm also looking at is right here, it says SPD, which is speed. I'm not sure exactly how this mechanic works. I had initially assumed that the highest speed character gets to go first every round, but that doesn't seem to be the case. It seems like there's like a d6 roll plus your speed, so there's like a random chance factor involved. 
But still, characters with higher speed are likely to go first. So there's a chance that maybe we could kill... We're unlikely to kill the Cultist Brawler before he gets his first round attack in. But we might be able to kill the Bone Soldier. So let's target him with our 3 to 7 damage hit. We'll do Zealous Accusation. And yes, we got to kill that guy before he got an attack in. Grape Shot. Rend for the old gods. Probably gonna apply... Oh, we resisted the bleed effect. Cool. But... Necropos just got shot with a crossbow. Eldritch push, push, just moved him back out of position. So, remember how he needs to be in position 1 or 2 to actually use his skills? That's not good for us. We can move him up, it takes a, each round he can move one place, or in between combat we can move him wherever the hell we want. But for now, we're just going to go ahead and end this character's life by using the incision. And we can have you take aim. I don't think so. I think we'll just do open vein. And the bleed effect got him. Victory. Pretty sweet. Perhaps the turning point. Now he's a ranged unit in the front row. He probably doesn't want to be there, does he? Incision. Predigar, unfortunately, can't use any of his skills. And if we were to pass, he would suffer stress. So what we're going to do is just have him move forward. And we do have a little bit of damage taken. Let's go ahead and do Divine Grace. Nice heal. Maximum heal. A devastating blow. <laughs> Man, when he hits, he hits hard. Jeez. Remind yourself that overconfidence is a slow and insidious right. killer. Uh let's see. I'm gonna assume that our character with the best trap is gonna be that character. Yeah, we're gonna have him open it. It says there's it doesn't say there's a trap, but you never know. Could be a trap in there. We got some some lucky dice. Only the Jester class can use it. It's uncommon. Gives three accuracy, five dodge, and reduces damage. Sweet. We'll take it. Well, use that on another character or something. All right. We've got a couple more rooms to explore. Let's see if we can make it through there. Here we go. We have a little bit more hunger. It's a good thing we brought extra food. Let's go ahead and eat. Continue for... Oh, 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 oh. I always forget to do this. We're in the middle. We're not in combat, right? So all you have to do is change who you have selected. Press 5. We're going to... Oh, oh, oh. Take that guy. Move him forward. We're going to put you... Do we want you there? I think we do. I think... Yep, position 2 is good. This is the right order. All right, we're good. We're good, we're good. Stashed heirlooms. Pretty good. How's the lighting situation? Right on time to use a torch. In Radiance, may we find victory. Fortunately, we found a trap. Didn't seem to do much. Randomly getting stressed out because we just don't like being in the dungeon. Now, we rolled scouting. Um, I still don't know exactly what causes you to actually get scouting. All I know is that having bright light increases the likelihood of it. And so now we can see very clearly there is an, in an interactable item here. There's a trap here, and there's nothing in these two tiles. And I have not seen it, like, ever be anything than that. Because we scouted, we know exactly what to expect. So here's our interactable object. It is a confession booth. It hasn't been used in years. Um, let's go ahead and have our, our crusader confess, I guess. Contains hidden treasure. 50 gold. Uh, next up, we're going to come across a trap. Scouted traps will be visible on the ground as you approach them. Select a hero and then click on the trap to attempt to disarm it. Some heroes are better than others at, at disarming. So we've already looked at this. We know that this character has a 30% trap stat. I believe that means he has a 30% chance to resist the effects of the trap. So we're going to select him and then click. We disarmed it. Sweet. So we bypassed that damage. It's pretty good. Our light's getting kind of dark. Let's use a torch. Notice how we passed by those two other rooms and there was nothing there. That's why you want to keep your, your light really bright so you get that chance to scout. So we have enemies in this room. Uh, I'm going to do Grape Shot Blast because it's awesome. She just got hit with a coral to the face. Or the book, actually. Nice dodge. We're going to go ahead and do a powerful incision to the front row character, I think. It's either that, or we could we could buff someone else's damage. But I don't think so. I think we'll just do the incision. We don't really have, like, a... One hero that does way more damage than anyone else. So I just don't see the value in it, really. 
All right, worst uh, hero that's taking the most damage is going to be you, so let's heal you up. Now, we don't need to keep our heroes at full health, but I just like to. <laughs> this is what I'm going to do. It'd be, like, you can have no health at all when you complete the campaign, or right, each dungeon, and then they, feel th they heal to full at the end. But at the same time, I just, I like to top off my characters. Because you never know when the, uh, well, the shit is going to hit the fan, right? Eldritch push. He resisted the push effect. Good, so he stays in the front. We like it. Rather than hit with you, shoot your crossbow, you just jabbed at us with it. Okay. Uh, let's see. 22 stress. We, we have no skill that lowers their stress, but you can heal the front row guy. That seems pretty good. Go ahead and do an incision. Nice work, Necrophos. And you're just going to go ahead and, uh, let's see, he's got only a 10% stun resist. We could attack him and maybe kill him, but let's just stun him. Very, very good chance to hit. Um, if we use the stun effect... Oh, that's Bulwark of Faith. I'm sorry. What do we need to do? Stunning Blow. We have a chance of... 85% chance to land the hit, and then he only has a 10% chance to resist the stun effect. We actually crit him with it. It's pretty good. Crushed by justice, he says. So... The way that stunning works is, if you stun a character in the current round, and he has yet to act, then he loses that turn. If you stun him after he's acted, he gets he loses his action in the next round. So no matter what, you don't have to pay attention to the order that they actually um, have moved in. They'll automatically lose a round of combat. So from here, we'll just uh, we'll go ahead and open his veins up. A singular strike. Damn, I missed your eyes. I don't think you did. You hit for 19. Creatures can be felled. They can Ag be beaten. Again. What do we got here? It's a sarcophagus, slightly ajar. Uh, we will have the uh, let's have the trap guy open it. Hidden treasures. Some more crests. Cool. And we're scouting. Check our lighting. So we can see here we've got two interactable objects and a uh, a combat and then we've got enemies in that room as well. So we got two more bits of combat before we're done. Let's go ahead and uh, move to this room. There's our object. It is loot. Got another torch. We'll go ahead and toggle that torch right now. The light, the promise of safety. Some more skeletons. We've surprised them with our bright light. Very good. Let's go ahead and uh, what do we want to do with you? You know, I like even though you can't bleed, I just feel like the four to seven damage is pretty high. So we'll go ahead and do that. He resisted the bleed effect, of course, because he has no blood. Um, let's see, we could do... You know what, we don't need any more heals. Let's just use judgment on the first guy. How dare you dodge me. Can't dodge that. Mowing them down. Again, they missed round one combat because they are... They were surprised. We are destroying this dungeon. Just wrecking it. Very good. That's the end of that. A trifling victory. But a right. victory nonetheless. What do we got here? An Iron Maiden. Again, traps, I don't know. Um I I guess we'll try it, maybe? Let's let's just see what happens. That's not good. He just picked up a modifier. This is bad. So he just picked up a permanent effect. Severe fear of closed in spaces. Claustrophobic. Crap. That wasn't good. Uh, we'll go ahead and use one more torch. The match is struck. Best chance to surprise born. them, I hope. Surprise them. No surprise? Fine. Triple dodge. It's not cool. Now, I gotta say, the likelihood of, of him missing, or them all dodging, Two, zero, two. I mean, that seems unlikely. He can't. He can't even dodge. So, and there must be like a group roll or something. Or maybe when it said dodge, it's not that actually that they dodged. It's actually maybe what it does is it takes their dodge stat plus his chance to hit, and then if he misses, it's just rolling one hit for all three of them. That's that's the only way I can see all three of them happening to dodge one attack. It's got to be a singular roll. We'll go ahead and we'll use uh, judgment on the slowest speed character so we can hopefully get him to not attack. How dare... How dare he dodge. Unacceptable. A little bit of nonsense there. Another dodge. Wow. 
about to reverse. How quickly the tide turns. All right, so we picked up some stress there. Oh. That's better. All right, grape shot. I see all three hit that time. Such a terrible assault cannot be left unanswered. Even though he is, it doesn't matter because we're in the last room. I'm still gonna heal him just out of habit. I just feel like it's the right thing to do. I don't want to risk having him get focused on the next round and having bad things happen. We could remove that bleed effect on him, but let's go for the kill. Double kill. Nice resist to the push. He has a 50% resist to being pushed. That's why he's so good at it. Uh, we'll go ahead and judge. You're not going to last long. There we go. As victories mount, Sweet. so too will resistance. Alright, that's the end of the dungeon. So, what do we get? Room by room. Hole by hole, we reclaim what is ours. We got a lot of stuff. <laughs> we got a lot of stuff. Got some more experience, and Fredegar picked up. Slayer of Mankind. If the monster is human, he has increased accuracy and 3% more crit chance. Awesome. Fredegar's a badass. Sweet. All right, cool. Now I'm gonna take a break here. In the next video, we I will. Days when the sun shone and laughter could be heard from the tavern. <laughs> we will be interrupted by him frequently, but also we'll talk about stress management. We'll hire a few more guys, and we'll take a look at our two new unlocked buildings. So thanks for watching, everyone. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. See you soon.